Well, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. It is um, with some enthusiasm and some sorrow that I stand before you today uh, to offer my full support to the last remaining candidate in the BCNDP leadership race, uh, my colleague and friend, David Eby. This has been a difficult road for everyone, some challenges along the way to be sure, but I am confident that the work of the table officers and the executive of the BCNDP have been thorough, have been exhaustive, and Elizabeth Cull, who has been a member of the BCNDP for decades, uh, took her job very seriously and came to the conclusions that you're all aware of. Those were presented to the Apodori campaign. They were uh, a, an attempt to rebut that. There was an appeal uh, that was delivered. Uh, it was rejected. The executive made a decision last night. An executive that's led by an indigenous man, a lawyer, a former chief, Aaron Shumahetsa. 80% of the executive are women. Almost 50% are people of color. So this is not about back rooms from the 1960s. This is about contemporary British, Columbian, contemporary British Columbians making decisions in the best interest of the province. I'm proud of the work they did, and I'm proud that David Eby will be the next Premier of British Columbia. Uh, for anybody that has questions in the room, please make your way over. First question today is Richard Zussman, Global News. David Eby will become the province's premier without having to go through a full leadership race. He will have not presented a platform. Uh, he will largely not have any mandate from either the members or from the province itself. Is, should British Columbians be comfortable with someone in that position becoming the premier of the province? David has been one of the hardest working members of my cabinet. Uh, he was, uh, when I was the leader of the opposition, the hardest working critic on behalf of the official opposition. Every file that I have given him, large files, sometimes multiple files, have been handled delicately and handled with success. The success we had in bringing down costs at ICBC are a direct result of the work of David Eby, uh, exposing the corruption and the money laundering that was so rampant in British Columbia before our government came to power was a direct result of the work of David Eby. We worked together to transform election finance laws, to make sure that the moneyed people could not buy elections, to make sure that rules would be followed, to make sure that everyone had an equal opportunity. And I'm very proud of David. It was never about a new mandate. It was about continuing the mandate we were given by the people of British Columbia just two years ago. And were it not for my personal health situation, I would have been happy to carry on. I've made it clear. Uh, that I'm not able to do that, and I am absolutely delighted that David has emerged, not with the, just the support of me, but the entire caucus, and I would argue the overwhelming majority of New Democrat members who were members because of the values that have been implanted in them over not just a few weeks, but over, quite frankly, generations. The BCNDP grew out of the CCF, the Cooperative Commonwealth Federation. Vaughn was covering politics when they were around. And, and so I'm confident that David will take that tradition, that fine, honorable tradition, and carry it forward as Premier. Uh, there are a group of members in your party who now feel disenfranchised. They feel they don't have a vote. They feel this is a non-democratic process. They may or may not have known that rules were broken when signing up to become a member. Have these people lost their voices here, and are you worried about losing the environmental activist wing of this party, either to leave politics or to go somewhere else? Not at all. In fact, uh, one of the strengths of my government has been a, a, a continent-leading climate action plan. I was just meeting with the governors of Washington, Oregon, and California, and the three of them universally praised the work we've been able to do here in British Columbia, building on previous governments to lead the continent in bringing forward initiatives to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and to address climate change. So I'm not at all concerned about that. And with respect to uh, being... Uh, disenfranchised. Uh, members are members. Uh, there is no vote because one of the campaigns didn't follow the rules and was disqualified as a result of that. Next question, Katie DeRosa, Vancouver Sun. Premier, originally when before Anjali uh, submitted her candidacy, uh, you know, David Eby was said was the obviously the only challenger. There was uh, talk of uh, a acclamation being better for the party just you know, as you were acclaimed and so the party's not fighting within itself. And now, is it a situation where the party has sort of torn itself uh, through this NDP leadership drama? And does that affect the, uh, the Liberals' uh, position before the next election? Well, uh, first of all, uh, I know that there are uh, 
people who have been around here a while uh, that have followed these types of races in the past, leadership races here in BC and across uh, the continent. Uh, and you know, I think of Patrick Brown, most recently a, a conservative candidate who was uh, disqualified from his race at the federal level. I think of uh, Aaron Gunn, who I knew, who played hockey with my, my son in, in Juan de Fuca. Uh, he was eliminated by the BC Liberals. Uh, these things happen. Sometimes campaigns are not uh, following rules and therefore they're disqualified. This has become uh, a much more uh, a public affair and I'm fine with that. And I'm sure that the Apodoria campaign is fine with that because it strikes me that that was their objective from the beginning. Uh, you have a meeting later today with uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau. Can you talk about what, what will be on the agenda? Well, I'm going to continue to make the case that the federal government needs to get in the game when it comes to addressing the challenges in public health care. Uh, I'm still in contact with my colleagues across the country. I know Doug Ford, uh, who has been uh, standing shoulder to shoulder, quite famously, uh, with the Prime Minister on other issues, is as concerned as I am, as is Francois Legault, as are the Prairie uh, Premiers and Premiers from Atlantic Canada. We need the federal government to get in the game. There is a uh, minister's meeting next week or early uh, November uh, in Vancouver, and that's a good start. And I'll be talking to the Prime Minister about that. I'll also be talking about uh, the unanimity with respect to uh, street disorder and uh, the challenges that prosecutors face as a result of federal uh, policies, federal uh, rulings and determinations by the Supreme Court and how important it is that the national government uh, get their head around this. Uh, I know the Prime Minister is aware of that. I know his ministers are. Uh, Minister Rankin and Minister Farnworth were both uh, with their colleagues uh, in Halifax just a week ago, and the federal government was there as well. Uh, so those are issues that I'm going to be talking with them about today. And, and also just bidding them a farewell, I, as I suspect this is the last time we'll be meeting face-to-face. -face. Next question, Rob Shaw, Czech News. Um, a Paterai is planning to be outside the front steps of the building at two uh, with supporters. What would you say to her? Well, her, her quarrel is not with this building. It's not with these people uh, that work here. It is with uh, her campaign that violated the rules that were clearly set out uh, before she entered the race. Uh, uh, her issue is with the executive of the BC NDP. Uh, her, she made her case to uh, the table officers in an appeal. It was rejected. Uh, the table officers passed on their recommendations to the executive. The executive agreed, and Ms. Apadurai's uh, campaign is disqualified. Her issue was not with this building. Uh, she may find a more receptive audience here with you than she would have uh, going to the head office. But again, uh, that's for her to determine, not me. The idea, though, that a young, bright, intelligent, articulate... David Eby. Yeah. Well, younger I'm than Eby. Younger than Eby, I guess. Oh, okay. Maybe Eby 20 Everyone's years ago. Everyone's younger than me, Rob, except <laughs> one guy here. But uh, the sorry, idea sorry. That, that someone who might be the next generation of New Democrats in the past, um, trying to change the world, uh, taking a big swing at a big problem, doesn't see themselves reflected in this party and doesn't, and doesn't want to make the compromises that you've had to make in government on files. What, what would you say to those, that generation of new, de new Democrats? Well, I apologize for interrupting your question, uh, but as I understand it, Rob, uh, the point you're making is here's a young activist uh, who wants to make an impact. Uh, full marks to her for that. She can continue to do that work that she was doing prior to uh, her and the Dogwood Initiative uh, starting her campaign. She can continue to do that work. Uh, I, I, her enthusiasm, her vigor is welcomed within the NDP. But you have to follow the rules in a leadership contest. You have to understand that we amended election finance rules. We amended how we engage, not just in uh, regular elections, municipal, provincial, but also in leadership campaigns. Uh, we have a young, dynamic, diverse caucus, and she would be, I would suggest, a welcome addition to that. But at this point, we have 57 members who range in age from mid-30s uh, to uh, early 70s. And that range of experience, more women than men, more people of color than have ever been elected to this legislature, we are increasingly representing the diversity of British Columbia. And our executive absolutely represents that diversity of young people who were grappling with a very, very difficult situation, not of their making, but they discharged their responsibilities, I would suggest, honorably and in good faith. And I'm proud of what they did, and I'm proud of where this government has come, and even prouder of where David will take it. Next question, Alex Lazenby, BC Today. 
Hi, Premier. So in the call report and that in the call report, it backed up claims that, you know, certain members of the Green Party were holding dual, certain people were holding dual Green NDP memberships, prompting um, Heather Stoutenberg to call it a hostile takeover by that party. Um, and also further saying that, you know, the Greens could put, be putting their official party status at risk. What are your thoughts on that sort of terminology and on that process? Well, certainly uh, Heather can speak for herself. She is the executive director of the party, uh, the provincial director. I can tell you that in my constituency, uh, the candidate for the Green Party's family are now members of the NDP. Uh, this is a recent occurrence. Uh, they never joined when I was uh, seeking their assistance. In fact, instead of uh, assisting me, uh, they mobilized and ran against me. So I have real tangible evidence, uh, if you will, in my own community of uh, individuals who were never supportive of me or the initiatives that I've been championing uh, over 18 years. Uh, and I think that does a disservice to the members like uh, Bill Wilson, who has been fighting elections since the 1950s. And uh, to see all of that hard work uh, taken away by uh, a, 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 list, a list that was uh, designed by getting clicks on the internet uh, is not, in, in my opinion, how we should proceed. And, and that was the conclusion uh, in short form. That was the conclusion of the executive, and I support that. And in question period today, uh, Sonia first now called out the government for a lack of transparency and also for breaking promises that they made in 2017 around, you know, party collaboration and across the aisle um, getting stuff done. What are your thoughts on those comments and what would you say to Sonia in response? Well, I, I can tell you that uh, Andrew Weaver and I collaborated uh, together to bring forward the uh, strongest climate action plan in the continent. Uh, we collaborated on a range of other issues uh, during our time of the Confidence and Supply Agreement. Uh, we put in place an all-party committee to look at the Police Act because these are not partisan questions. We need to make sure everyone is talking about public safety, street disorder, and how we can support law enforcement, how we can make sure we're putting in place the programs and the people to protect citizens across uh, this great province. We just, again, struck the Health Committee to address the opioid crisis at the urging of uh, the Liberals and the Greens. So uh, I would suggest that Ms. Fersenow is being selective. Uh, if I don't agree with her on a given day, I'm not collaborative. If I agree with her on five days, then uh, that's just an ordinary business. I, I can't speak for her. I'm not even going to pretend to try. Next question, Les Lane, Times Colonist. Oh, thank you. David Eby's been immersed in government issues for the last five years, as you pointed out earlier. Do you think he's got what it takes to uh, concentrate on the party and the party membership and heal some of the obvious bad feelings that are yeah. percolating right now? Well, again, I would suggest, uh, first of all, that some of those bad feelings are from people like the family of the Green Party candidate who ran against me. And, and I, I, I feel empathy for them as human beings, but I, I'd have to suggest that their, their indignation is feigned and they're trying to accomplish by stealth what they couldn't accomplish at the ballot box uh, in the last election campaign. So in that sense, uh, I'll leave that to rest. But your, your question is a good one, Les. And, and one of the challenges of being leader of a political party, and I'm sure uh, uh, Mr. Falcon would agree, is it's not just the work of the legislature, it's not just the work in communities, it's also uh, the strength and vitality of the political party that you represent. And I have been very proud to represent the NDP as leader for the past eight years, and I am confident that David has all the tools he needs and all the support, quite frankly, uh, that he will need to, to take on that enormous task. But it's, uh, is it easy? Not at all. Is it rewarding? Absolutely. I noticed uh, last night and this morning, there's a number of, I don't know how many, a number of NDP members, who, regardless of how they would have voted on this thing, they wanted a vote and they don't think this looks very good for the party to disqualify a candidate. Um, if you back up and look at this thing, did this leadership, um, this aborted contest go about as badly as you might have expected at the outset or was it worse? Uh, <laughs> Why are you so awesome, Les? Uh, 
No, uh, look, uh, this isn't how anybody wanted this to roll, but uh, I think it's a cautionary tale for all, uh, all of us. Uh, most British Columbians, near 5 million souls, are getting on with their lives, and they're worried about affordability, about housing, about health care. They're not worried about uh, someone's hurt feelings that they uh, circumvented the rules and were called out on it. This will pass. Uh, is it disappointing? For sure. But I've always been about talking about the things that matter to my neighbors, uh, to British Columbians. And what matters to them is we have been transparent. We had a process. Uh, we had a chief electoral officer of quite profound uh, renown within the NDP to manage this process. A document was produced, an exhaustive document was produced, and you now have it in your possession. I don't know what would be not transparent about that. The rules were clear at the outset of the race that if there were uh, reasons for disqualification, they would be uh, identified, they would be uh, reviewed, there would be opportunity for appeal, and then the provincial executive would make a final determination. Uh, I am a member of the executive, I am a table officer, I did not participate in the discussions last night. I observed uh, the table officer's uh, receiving of Ms. Cull's report, uh, I think it was a week ago, uh, I'm not sure, I've, I've lost track of time, but recently. Uh, but again, not I have voice, but I didn't exercise my voice beyond saying uh, how proud I had been uh, to how proud I have been of this job, the, the absolute uh, uh, thrill of my life to have this opportunity to stand before all of you and sweat under these hot lights. Uh, so, uh, no, I'm, I, I'm ready to go. And I'm very, very, very pleased that David Eby is going to be the next premier of British Columbia because I'm a British Columbian and I want a competent, competent, compassionate leader. And he fits that bill. We only have time for a couple of more quick questions. Andrew McLeod, Taib. Thank you. Um, you've been talking about transparency and the role of the provincial executive. Why isn't the list of who's on the executive public? Why? Because they're being inundated by people who say this is, this is by Green Party members saying, we want to take over your party. Leave them alone. They're doing their job, volunteers, and they're going to be abused by a bunch of people who cheated and want to get away with it. Sorry, uh, Andrew. Uh, you can write that up any way you want. Uh, I believe that these individuals, young men and women, diverse men and women from across BC, elected at our last convention to these positions, should not then be ridiculed and abused by people who only joined the party because they got an email from someone that doesn't even belong to the NDP. I, I just I can't be more frustrated by that type of thuggery. So no, I'm not going to publish their names, but I'm sure that someone will be delighted to have them. But given their role, I mean, this is, I mean, I'm not even sure exactly how many people, but they, they were they've just chosen, here, here, let me, just let chosen me go the back. next let me go premier back. of the province. They were elected at our last convention. If you've been paying attention, you would have been able to identify who they are. They're on, uh, I'm sure you can find their names on the website. If you want their addresses and phone numbers and emails, you're going to have to do something else, not talk to me. I think I'm done here. Thanks very much, everybody. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you around.